What's going on everybody? Welcome to another Deep Learning with Python and TensorFlow tutorial. In this tutorial what I'd like to do is kind of show another interesting example and kind of a cool characteristic with specifically neural networks and I guess it's also it's a, a statistics kind of principle that's been known for a while but anyway I just wanted to show that it still applies in, in, with neural nets. So uh, what we're going to be doing is uh, what first of all like neural networks we know neural networks Typically, I mean, people are working really hard on getting neural nets and just doing reinforcement learning and artificial intelligence much quicker with much less data. But in general, neural networks like a lot of data. So a lot of tasks, this can be hard, but if we can simulate or model that task in any way, then we can generate huge data sets to train off of. So things like math and physics, we can just write a script that just outputs a bunch of examples really, really fast. Uh, and another kind of modeling an environment scenario is with something like OpenAI's Jim. So that's what we're gonna be using here is OpenAI Jim. Um, so if you're not familiar with OpenAI Jim, this is, whoops, wrong monitor, there we go. Um, this is what you go if you go to just open gym.openai.com and then I'm in the environments here. And like these are just a bunch of environments. Like these are just the ones that come with straight gym, but you can download like for the Atari version, you can play Atari games if you're on Windows, it's not gonna work very well. Actually, it's not gonna work at all. But if you, if you happen to be on Linux or something, <clears throat> you can go and, and play with these games. We're going to actually work with just the cart pull environment. So the cart pull environment's really simple. The idea is that you'll start the, the pull, you'll have the control over the cart and your only option is to move left or right. If you move basically too far to the left or too far to the right, it's game over. And then if the pull itself, I think it's what, 15 per, uh, yeah, so if it moves more than 15 degrees from vertical, you also lose. So basically the task is we just trying to balance this pull by moving the cart left or right just a little bit. Um, if, um, if you be, get a score above 200, that's considered, um, I'm sorry, this is episodes before solved. But anyways, um, obviously you want that to be as low as possible. Like 239 is pretty hard. We'll, we'll, I'll show you that even with this method, we're probably, we're not going to beat 239, um, for being that quick. But anyway, um, we can beat 51,000 though. <laughs> we definitely can't beat 0, 0.0. Anyway, um, um, the goal is to get a score of 200 or greater, and that's considered to be solved. So, uh, so now we're gonna, uh, actually this is an average of 195 over 100 consecutive trials. Whatever, we will do that. So anyways, um, that's what we're gonna do. What you're gonna need is quite a few things. Um, hopefully if you've been following along in the deep learning series, you, you probably have quite a few of these. Um, but if not, basically what you're gonna need is pip install TensorFlow. I'm going to be on the GPU version of TensorFlow. That would be dash GPU. Plus you're gonna to have to install a bunch of dependencies. So if you wanna use the GPU version, I have tutorials on that. Um, you can come here to Python Programming Net, just type in probably CUDA and you'll find it, I'm guessing. Let's just type it real quick. Yeah, CUDA GPU TensorFlow, boom. So you can search for it up here if you didn't see that. Um, also, if you're on Windows, you I have one on YouTube. I don't I never posted that on Python Programming Net, but it exists on YouTube. If you're on Windows and want to do the GPU version of TensorFlow, I've got an example there. Also, for tutorials, I've got Introduction to Neural Networks. I've got an introduction to actually deep learning specifically with TensorFlow, and then also um, an intro to TF Learn, which is what we're going to be using here. Now, if you're familiar with a different high-level, um, you know, framework. Use whatever the heck you want. It, it really doesn't matter. <laughs> so whatever you want to use, go for it. Um, we're just going to like, we're just going to copy and paste from this tutorial. And just as a quick aside, someone made a comment on one. It was just one person. But if you feel like it's the case that I'm just like copying and pasting from something and you're not learning, well, come to the tutorial. There's already a tutorial on that. I'm not going to repeat myself <laughs> on that exact same tutorial. So anyways, we are going to just take the model from this one. And that's why I'm saying like you can take, because we're just going to use a simple multi-layer perceptron feed forward model. Um, so if you want to do that in Keras or Keras or however you're going to pronounce that, um, pretty tensor, TF slim, whatever you want to use, go for it. Or you can even use, you don't even have to use TensorFlow at all. So, um, okay, let's get started. You're going to need TensorFlow GPU. You're going to need just Jim. So pip install Jim. And then we're also, like I said, if I'm going to be using TFLearn, you can use whatever the heck you want. It's just the model part, not a big deal. Great. So once you have all that stuff, you're ready to rumble. 
And if I forget to put a link in the description to the actual this tutorial, which will have links to all the things I just pointed out, someone let me know. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so what I'm going to show you today is that with um, an interesting thing about what we can do in just statistics in general is a lot of times you'll find that something with, that generates a signal. So in this case, a neural net's generating a signal that either we want to move left or right. Um, when when you have a cluster of really weak signals, putting them together can oftentimes produce a, you know, a, a, a signal that's stronger than the sum of all of the parts, basically. So it's more accurate than any of the, the other signals even combined a lot of times. So um, anyways, that's what we're going to be kind of illustrating with, with neural nets. So uh, first we're going to make our imports. We're going to import Jim, which is the OpenAI Jim. We're going to import random because initially we're just going to let this, um, basically the, the idea is you call it like you've got the game, which is the environment, and you've got an agent. The agent will initially just move randomly just so we can get some starting data. Then we're going to import NumPy as NP so we can do some NumPy stuff. So I guess in theory, if you don't have NumPy, pip install NumPy. Um, import TF learn. And then we're also going to import some other stuff. <clears throat> um, I guess we could type it out. That's fine. Uh, from TF learn dot layers dot core, we're going to import input underscore data, drop out, and then fully connected. So this is just <clears throat> the input layer, uh, drop out information. So we're just going to drop out like 20% basically. And then fully connected just for your typical fully connected layer as opposed to, you know, convolutional layer. LSTM or whatever. Then we're going to say from tflearn.layers.estimator, we're going to import regression. That's just for our final uh, layer there. And then from uh, statistics, we're going to import mean and median. Uh, we're going to use both of these just to illustrate um, how well random did. And then we're going to basically train off of random. And we're going to see what the scores we're learning from are. And then we're going to see what our score is. Uh, and you prepare to be amazed. So now, from collections, we're going to import <clears throat> counter. Sorry for my allergies. I've got like a scratchy throat. Anyway, learning rate LR equals 1 E negative 3. Feel free to tinker with this. It, it, this is such a simple task. You really could get away with quite a few variables uh, and still probably have similar performance. But as you make the game more complex, there's more movements and stuff like that, you might, you might actually need to start tweaking things. Now we're going to define the environment. The environment is going to be gym.make. And for us, we're going to use, uh, not cart pull, cat pull. <laughs> A more fun game, cat pull. Anyway, v0. Now what we're going to do is env.reset. That just gets the environment kind of rolling. Now what we're going to say is we're just going to take basically the, the environment. We're going to say, in theory, goal steps could be 200 because that's like Basically, every frame that we go where we've balanced the pole, I probably should have stressed this before, but here I am. So again, we're trying to balance the pole on the cart, and the way that we get a score is every basically frame uh, that we go while the pole is still balanced, um, that is plus one to the score. I'm pretty sure it's frame. It could be milliseconds, but I don't, I'm pretty sure it's frame. Anyway, um, yeah, it's definitely frame. It can't be in time because you can speed it up as you're going to see. So anyway, the goal steps will be basically, um, in theory, 200 would be enough, but let's go ahead and make it 500 just, just to do it. Then we're going to say score requirement. So like I was saying before, we're going to try to learn from the, the random moves, but obviously we don't want just any of the randoms. We're going to go with all the random games that have a score of 50 or greater. Again, we could, we could kind of tweak this as we go, but for now we're just going to kind of throw some numbers out pretty quickly. And then we're going to say initial games, and for now let's say 10,000. If I forget to modify this, go ahead and modify it, because in theory if you make this number too big, you might run into like, almost like you brute forced every answer <laughs> or something. Um, but I still, I'll try to explain that. Hopefully I'll remember all these things once we get finished, but I just want to address that qu query later. So now what we're going to do is we're going to just start off by making random games. So we're going to define some random games first. <clears throat> and then what we're going to do is for an episode, episode, um, whoops, for an episode and range, and let's just do like five. Because basically what I want to do is just kind of illustrate 
what the random games actually look like. So for episode in uh, range of five, I'm going to do, we're going to reset the environment. In theory, we probably actually don't, I want to keep that there, but we probably don't need to do that again. But anyway, for T, well, we do in there, we probably could get rid of this reset, but I'm going to leave it. Anyway, for T, uh, in range, um, and for now we'll do 200, but in theory we could say goal steps. So let's just, we'll be good. We'll do goal steps. For T in range, goal steps, m.render. So if you want to see what's happening in your game, you can render. If you want it to go much faster, don't render. <laughs> but we're going to render because I just want to show you what it looks like to move randomly. Then we're going to say action is equal to m.action underscore space dot sample. So what this does is a nifty little function that will take your environment and just take a random action in your environment just for you, basically. Uh, this isn't what we're going to do later, but um, but it's kind of nice because you can go to any environment and you can generate random actions this way. Uh, and then, and, and really, you probably, I'm not going to change the code that I've kind of planned out, but I, you, you probably could just go off of this and it'd be easier to switch games later on. So food for thought. Anyway, observation, reward, done, info. Observation will be um, basically an array of just data from the game. A lot of time, a lot of games, it'll be the actual pixel data. So just all of the pixel data. Uh, in this case, it's actually going to be like pole position, cart position, and something else. I think it's four values. Reward, basically either you got a one or a zero, the thing was bounced or not. Done is the game over. Info, any other info. And then we're going to say that is equal to env.step. And a step takes... An action. And then finally, we're just going to say if done break. Okay, so let's run some, some random games first. And let's just see and make sure everything's working as we would expect. There we go. So as you can see, that just banged through five games. And you can see we, we pretty much lost really quickly. <laughs> so... Um, anyway, hopefully if, if yours didn't pop up or you got an error or something like that, leave it below. Otherwise, in the next tutorial, what we're going to do is actually start building through um, creating the sample data based on random moves. And then after that, we'll make the network and run it and train it and all that fun stuff. So if you have questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.